We'll start with an opening statement by Coach Green, and when he's finished, we will open the floor for questions just for our student athletes. Coach? Well, first and foremost, in my mind, and and uh, this is the this is as tough a team as we've faced all year long. And you could see it on film, but the film didn't do justice, obviously, to just how tough they are. But again, when you play in the league that we play in, it prepares you for this. And uh, when you play the, the, the Michigan States and the Ohio States and the Wisconsins and the Michigans and everybody in between, it, it gets you ready for tough battles. But uh, our guys, they in the second half, they never wavered on the belief that they could and would win the game. And um, we played defense the way we were supposed to play it for the entire game. And, and we made life a lot harder for as good a player as we faced, in my mind, all year in, in Wyatt. And uh, our guys just did a great job of continuing to believe, moving the ball, playing through everything that went inside of the game. And, and the biggest thing for us is Temple could never get any separation. And uh, if they'd have got separation, well, maybe it's a little bit different. But they couldn't because our guys withstood that. And uh, uh, it was just a matter of time, I think, the way our guys approached it, that things would break for them. If we just continued to defend, if we continued to, to do our best job of taking wide away, and we continued to get good shots and good ball movement and get the ball inside and inside out on offense. And uh, that's exactly what happened. The guys that are up here, obviously for a reason, did significant things in this game. Victor had a tremendous second half. Cody continued to battle through everything possible inside of the game and made big plays. Uh, but frankly, we don't win the game without our two seniors right here. And Jordan uh, playing through some pain, making two big shots. But Christian's rebounding, Christian's scoring, and most importantly, Christian's defense uh, showed a toughness that, that, that he has. And, uh, and, and it was great that the country got a chance to see that because they're, they're a really, really good team. And a couple of the key significant factors in this game, last six games, uh, from our estimations, Wyatt was getting anywhere from 46, 47 percent of his points were coming off the foul line. And for us to keep him off the foul line was as big a factor as anything else today. And for him to go 4-4 four four in that uh, was huge because he made some, obviously made shots in the first half, but we did a much better job in the second half. I think the, the job did on O'Brien, uh, the job did on Randall. Uh, those those were big big factors, and then how Christian locked down Jefferson, and and when he was trying to get things going offensively, for them uh, were huge keys. So, uh, just a, a win that that uh, and an experience and an understanding of the game that's going to help us moving forward without a doubt. And I'm proud of the way every one of them played. Questions for our student athletes here in front. <clears throat> Terry Hutchins with the Indianapolis Star. Victor, just talk about the three at the end. You guys were three for 12 at that point. Just talk about the, the confidence to even take that shot. Um, well, when the game is in movement, you know, we, we, and, we hit, and we hit Cody in the post, you know, people get open shots. And, uh, you know, I was just moving without the ball, and, you know, Cody looked, fouled me, and I was open, and I just, you know, pretty much shot the ball, you know. And, um, you know, I was just... In, you no, know, open, and I shot it. It really didn't have anything to do with the the moment or the confidence to shoot it. I just went in my caught it and shot it. You know, and I thought I didn't think about it. You know, I think that's when I struggle is when I think about shots. Ken Bykoff inside Indiana Christian. Could you talk about the challenge that they seem to throw at you late in the game? Where they seem to want to isolate you on the guy bringing up the ball. Oh yeah, well, um, <clears throat> I just try to get up and you know, um, you know, just keep my chest in front of him. Um, I don't know if they were trying to trying to isolate, but it, you know that's what it seemed like. But I just try to keep them outside the elbows and uh, just try to challenge and um, you know play solid defense. Zach Osterman inside Indiana Christian, um, just what did you see on that block? I think it was Lee down low, kind of recovering quickly uh, out of the trap when Wyatt just flung the ball there under the basket. Oh uh, yeah, well, uh, Cody and Victor had blistered blister, uh, high ball screen, and I was um, I was on the weak side, and I was kind of hugged up too much. And uh, wow, you know, he put enough put enough air under the ball, enough for me to get there. And you know, I got it, got there, and uh, challenged the shot and blocked. It. Jordan, how is your shoulder, and and just kind of what's your condition? Uh, my shoulder's good. I'm sure it'll be a little sore, but um, nothing too serious. And you know, I was. You'd have to do a lot more to me than that to keep me off the floor for, um, you know, in this kind of situation. And, uh, you know, my teammates had confidence in me, and I was able to knock down some shots in the second half. Uh, Victor, obviously you knew the brackets were going to potentially take you guys to Washington, D.C. 
I'm back here. Um, so what does it mean to you to, to actually be going going home and playing the next game uh, in front of family and friends? Um, it's a great feeling, you know, and um, I'm just glad that we're going, you know, and um, we want to be successful there, you know, so it's going to be fun playing in front of my family and my friends and, and all that, but, you know, it's a business trip, and, um, you know, we're on a mission. Could we talk about, I mean, you guys were able to hang around the whole second half, but then you scored the final 10 points of the game. They didn't score in the last three minutes and nine seconds. I mean, just talk about how this team was able to make big plays when you needed it. Um, I mean, that's what we've been doing all year. Uh, we've been in a lot, of, a lot of close games throughout the Big Ten especially. Um, you know, we got a mature group that, you know, even though it wasn't going as well, we couldn't get things going for a while. But, um, you know, that's what winners do. you got to survive in advance this time of year. And uh, we got some big plays down the stretch, and um, like we were moving on. In the back. Cody, can you just talk? Coach Tem uh, mentioned how Temple was a difficult team and a tough team. Can you just talk about the toughness that you saw inside from them and, and the difficulty that they were uh, giving you? Uh, yeah, they were they were a tough team. They uh, you know they weren't as big as some of the other big Big Ten teams we played against, but um, you know toughness makes up for a lot of that. I thought for sure I was going to set a turnover record with all the mistakes I was making, but uh, you know my, my teammates had a lot of confidence in me and kept on throwing it to me. And um, lucky we can make a few plays on the stretch. And like like we said earlier, it's uh, uh, they are a tough group and um, a lot of credit to them. Uh, Victor Dustin up here at Bloomington Herald Times. Uh, back here. Just uh, wanted to ask about the three again. Just what what's going through your, through your mind after that ball goes in, and just what were you saying during that timeout? Looked like you were just kind of hitting your chest, chest and yelling a little bit. What were you uh, saying at that point? Um, I couldn't even tell you. I don't even remember. Um, I was just kind of filled with emotion, you know, and uh, you know, just credit to my teammates. You know, especially these seniors to my left, and uh, especially the bench. You know, they did a phenomenal job today. You know, and um, <clears throat> without them, we can't win. You know, and, uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, Todd Golden, uh, Tarot Tribune, starts questions for Christian. Christian, I know your shot against Kentucky last year was big <coughs> and an important part of Indiana's progression last year as a program. Was your block shot today, given what was at stake, and given that you're a senior, was that a bigger play than that shot was? Oh, yeah, definitely. I feel like, um, you know, I just want to, my motivation is just to play with these guys as long as possible. And, you know, I'm willing to do whatever it, whatever it takes in, um, in order to, you know, keep playing. I just want to play until, until, you know, we can't play no more. So, um, you know, I, I feel like it is right now. So, um, you know, that's just how I feel. You think they'll sell as many pictures of that? Yeah. <laughs> you got time for two or three more? One, two, three. Uh, Victor, at any point did you flash back to last year's VCU game, and did you see similarities with it? No, I didn't really. No, I didn't really think about the last year's game. I was just thinking about you know getting big stops, you know, and slowing Khalif down. You know, he had a great game. You know, um, he's one of the toughest matchups I've ever had this year. You know, and um, he did a phenomenal job of, of scoring the basketball. So I was just trying to limit his touches and make him not catch it. And I think uh, I did a pretty good job of that in the second half, but. You know, I wasn't the only one who guarded him, so credit to Will Sheehy, uh, Remy Abel, um, Christian got on him a few times, even Cody was on him, you know, so just throwing different bodies at him. So, you know, it's not a one-man show, you know, and without my teammates, um, you know, we can have slow him down. I was going to ask the same question, but, I mean, as far as, as guard and why, what were you able to do better, say, in the last 10 minutes than, than maybe not so much at the beginning? Um, just make it hard for him to catch the ball. Um, and um, I think that's pretty much all I, I, I did a pretty good job of. You know, in the second half, I was kind of letting him catch it. and, and uh, I mean, the first half, I was letting him catch it easy and, you know, let him just have a comfort game. He was comfortable. And um, in the second half, you know, we kind of limited his touches and made it hard for him to even move, you know. And um, so uh, we just did a good job of that in the second half. Last one. Uh, Victor. ChaseSeniorPhilHoops.com, you talk about the assignment of guarding Khalif White, but what elements of his game make him such a, a tough guard to guard? Um, he plays at his own pace, and nothing, nothing speeds him up, you know, and it doesn't matter who you put on him. He's, he's going to play at the same pace, and 
that's why he's such a good guard, you know, and um, he does a great job of cre- creating space for himself and, um, you know, getting his angles to the, to, to the rim, you know, essentially. So um, he's a great player, and he's going to be a great player in the future as well. Christian, Cody, Jordan, and Victor, thank you, and good luck against Syracuse. <laughs> Questions for Coach Green here in the front? Coach, kind of the same thing that I asked Victor. How did that game against BCU in the tournament last year help you guys tonight? Uh, we went to a play that we ran late in that game that really, uh, for a little karma with that, I guess, there was a play that we ran off the uh, off the elbow that we got a big foul on late when we were making our comeback that we ha- had put in after a timeout uh, last year against BCU, and then we scored on it a few times. So that crossed my mind. Other than that, uh, I'm not sure it's that as much as just the, the fact that these guys have, have been through so much. So you're never sitting over there talking about, you know, are we going to win the game? It, it's This is what we have to do. And, and, and you keep all doubts out of their heads, and, and you keep them focused. And, and, and most importantly, they keep themselves focused on, on what's most important, which is the next possession. And, and uh, But there's one. That, that was one in answer to your question. We went to that play, and it felt good to get something out of it like we did last year. Because Brian Jacobs Temple, there's after the game enters the Temple's huddle and said a few mm-hmm. words. What problems did you say that? Because I have great respect for great competitors, and it was an opportunity. Uh, uh, I haven't always been great after the end of games, but that one I I, uh, I did because they just happened to be standing there, and they were all there together. And and uh, I have you know those those kids don't know or those young men don't know me. I really don't know them, but I have unbelievable respect for them because I have great respect for their coach. And I just told them that they were as tough a team as we have seen all year. And they played against great teams, and we've played against great teams, and they're as good as any of them. And, and it was an unbelievable honor to, to, to go battle with them. Jeff Brazil, CBS Sports.com. At any point in the second half, did you think about maybe throwing a, a junk defense out there? Absolutely. Box and one and uh, not box and one. Uh, no, because because as soon as you do that, then you have the risk of Jake O'Brien being back in. And I think it was a huge key that Jake O'Brien didn't get going in this game because he was their second leading scorer. We've seen firsthand what he can do. But but no, it, it definitely we had things that we were ready to go to early. But but at the same time, uh, the fact that Jefferson and Lee were playing so well and making shots changed that a little bit. So. No, we, we were doing a much better job. We, we, were, we were playing. We needed to do a better job early of making it harder for Wyatt to get comfortable. And, and that doesn't mean being an all-out denial, unless it's at the shot clock. But he was just too comfortable. And I thought the guy that really stemmed the tide for us in the first half, that's why he got the start in the second half, was Remy Abel. So, so that, w- that was a big key. And, and, uh, but we have some things that, that we could have gone to, and, and I just chose not to. Mark Hale, New York Post. Tom, uh, even if you didn't verbalize doubts, I mean, obviously there's uh, going to have been a feel about this program this year that this could be a special season. I was curious if with five minutes to go in the game and you guys are still trailing, if in your mind at all you're thinking, I wonder if this is just how it ends today. Uh, no. No, I, I think about that before the game. You know, I, 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 it's, the, the games are, before the games come, it's always miserable. You know, for, for me, I'm sure it is for a lot of coaches. This time of year, it's even more so. Uh, but but those, you, you got to purge yourself of those doubts, and, and it's so hard. I mean, I should just pray and, and, and try to get all that negativity out of my head. But, but yeah, I don't want it to end. I, I really don't. I love being around these guys. They're as smart and cerebral and tough-minded and together as any group I've ever been around. So absolutely, I, I, th- those things go through my mind, but, but not during the game. Coach, uh, Reed Forgrave with FoxSports.com, uh, straight ahead of you. Um, the, are, are there any Big Ten teams that you thought Temple is most analogous to? And could you explain a little bit how that brutal Big well, Ten you got to explain that word to me because I have no idea what that word means. Similar to <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and uh, if you could okay. also explain like, how that brutal Big Ten schedule uh, prepares you. Well, for. the Big Ten, first and foremost, prepares you. I've said it before, but it, it's, it, it's the truth. Everything and anything. It prepares you for tough possession by possession battles, which is what today turned out to be. And uh, we use examples of players like certainly the one with, with, with Wyatt would have been Trey Burke and, and, and preparing for him. Jake O'Brien would have been uh, potentially a Tyler Griffey. Uh, you know, back at Illinois, there were certain aspects of their team, but, but the way they get after the glass 
uh, our, our comparisons there would be Michigan State, Minnesota, Ohio State. Uh, but would I say that they, would, would there be one team that they would be compared to? I don't know if I would say that. I know this. If they were in our league, uh, they'd be fighting for a championship too. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I mean, they're that good. And, and, and again, we felt like that. I mean, they, they were beating NC State 38-22 the other night. And, and uh, they're really good. The more film we watch, the, them winning at Syracuse, the way they played at Kansas, outside of really the Duke game, uh, every game was just an incredible battle for them. And, and, and they found ways to win close games. And that's when you're most concerned about. Those are the things that go through your head more than anything else, is this team knows how to win close games. But so does ours. Got time for a few more here. Tom, Bob Kravitz, Indianapolis Star. Right after the game, your first emotion, is it more relief or is it joy? That was relief tonight. It was relief. It, it was, uh, I didn't have a lot of, I had emotion at halftime. I didn't have a lot of emotion during the game. I mean, it, we needed to play better. And, and uh, uh, it wasn't like walked in the locker room, jumping up and down. I want them to be excited, but I also want them to understand what we're playing for. And, and, and uh, uh, it, there were a lot of different games going on in that game tonight. There was our start. There was our middle of the second half. There was how we ended the second. I mean, uh, during the middle of the first half, there was the end of the first half. Then there's how we played in the second half. And, and, but I'm proud of their maturity because I don't think an immature team has a chance to win this game. So, I mean, the maturity that they've gained is fantastic. But, but, but it's more relief. But it, it's not relief because we dodged the bullet and you feel pressure about what's in front of you. It's more relief that... You know, we, we, finally, we finally got through this, I think is the biggest thing for me personally. Just to follow up real quick, if that's, that's okay. Yep. Um, you guys got about six, five or six stops at the very end of the game. Are there some, some specific drills, things that you do in practice um, that translate to moments like this in particular? Absolutely. Three stops in a row. You know, we'll play a three stops in a row, three scores in a row type of game uh, to maybe three or four. So... If the defense gets three stops and they get three scores, that's like a, they've got two. And you don't get a point unless you've got three in a row of one or the other. It becomes very competitive. And, and uh, that, that, that is big. That three stops in a row thing is just absolutely huge for us. That and deflections are just such a barometer um, of, of how you're playing and, and what your winning's like. And uh, that would be a big one for us. Then there's some shot clock, half-court games that we play a finish in the clock. Uh, finishing the clock out, whether it be four and four, four and four especially, those type of drills are really good. I think they transfer over. Last two here in the back. Tom, uh, Mike DeCourcy from Sporting News. Um, what uh, led you decide to go to the face guarding with Vic uh, in the second half? And when it worked, what was it that uh, convinced you to give him some possessions off and, and use Remy and Will? Well, I, I think the bottom line is we, we just had to make, all night long, we wanted to make it difficult for him to get the ball, and we didn't do that. And we didn't do that at the start. And then it was going to be about not letting him get the ball back at the shot clock because he's such a great shot clock player. And, uh, it, it, again, to us, it wasn't going to be as much about the matchup as it was just keeping a chest in front, playing, playing him the way that we wanted to. We made an adjustment uh, near the end of the game on playing him more chest to chest when he had the ball. But it really became more about... If he can't catch it, he can't shoot it. And so let's do everything we can do to just, from the very beginning, not let him get it. And then just keep an eye on those guys and, and read the wind. I mean, he's that good. And, and he, the game called for that to happen. And, and it wasn't like, well, let's just hope he cools off. No, we've got to do everything we can do to keep him from catching the ball. Last one. Uh, Max McCombs, Indian Daily Student. Uh, when a player, an opposing player, gets off to such a, a hot start like Wyatt did today, what do you do to keep that momentum from spreading to the rest of his team and, and kind of keep those at bay and keep yourself or your team? Well, I think that you don't panic. You don't panic. I mean, you keep moving your matchups around, but I think if you go to a different defense too early, uh, you could be showing panic to your kids, but most importantly, you could be allowing somebody else to hurt you. And, and again, the, the, the game is close. I mean, it's not like... It's not like Victor Oladipo or Will Shee here are bad defenders. We just weren't playing him correctly, and, and we were make, trying to make our adjustments. But, but now if the game starts to slip and other guys are feeling really hot, then, then it becomes a situation where you've got to do something a little bit differently. But when the game is close and balanced like there, it's not about, well, you know, if we just go to this box and one or this triangle and two, you don't want somebody else getting hot at that point. And, and um, I, I, those are the biggest things. 
to me. I mean, it's you want to have different things in your arsenal that you can go to, but most importantly, you want to have your principles at some point come back and really help you the best. And, and tonight they did at the second half. Coach, thank you. Good luck in the Sweet All right, 16. Thank you.